Praise the Lord. All right. If you have your Bibles, we're going to ask you to turn to the book of Romans, chapter 5. Romans, chapter 5. And when you've found it, please stand with us for the reading of the word. Everybody there? Amen. Amen. All right. Let's begin at verse 12. We're going to read down through the end. Verse 12 says, <clears throat> Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all had, have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That, that as sin, sin hath reigned, reigned unto death, death even, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal, eternal life by Jesus, Jesus Christ our Lord. our Lord. Praise God. Pray with me. Father, thank you for Jesus yes. Christ, your son. Thank you, thank you for the work on the cross. Yes. Thank you, Lord God, for the atoning sacrifice. Thank you for grace yes. through our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and truth. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for the gift, the free gift of righteousness through Christ our Lord. And because of the grace of Christ, this grace or this righteousness, we, we shall reign in life yes. by one, Jesus Christ. And therefore, we take courage and give thanks to you for all things. Bless now the word and bless the hearers. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Hope that everyone is going to um, be encouraged today. We've been teaching on healing the sick. Healing the sick. I'm expecting that sick bodies will be healed as the word is coming forth. Because God is his word and God honors truth, right? And his word is truth. So we've been talking about healing the sick and we... Uh, just by a brief way of review. So I would like for you to just listen very attentively, if you will, and just keep an open heart and open mind to the voice of the Spirit and expect God to minister to your particular needs. The Lord says it's not by might nor by power but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. 
by way of review, we came from Psalm 103. And the emphasis that we placed was, blessed be the Lord God who forget it, forgiveth all of our iniquities and healeth all of our diseases. What a wonderful passage of scripture. What a wonderful truth, a promise. We talked about how it is just as much God's will to heal the physical body as it is to heal the soul. When a person gets saved, we are excited, right? right. We all know and believe and understand that this is the will of God. Yeah. And sometimes the body, physical bodies can be sick for a long, long time. And it's easy to buy into the fact that, well, this is the will of God, but that is not the will of God. The will of God is to heal the body as well as the soul. And that's what Jesus displayed. So uh, my hope is that we all and those that are listening by way of television or watching may grab a hold of a new lease on life. If you've been weighted down with sicknesses and diseases and even if the doctors gave you up and said that there's no cure for your condition. There is a cure. And it's found in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Who forgiveth all of thine iniquities and healeth all of thy diseases. The word is true. So we talked about the word being the seed and how the seed will do his work if it's planted in the soil of the heart. And so we gather that we all can use more of the seed of the word. And the word makes clear, according to Jesus in the parables, that the word is the seed, but the seed carries the divine life, the potential for divine life. And so if we are going to be more like Jesus, we need to spend more time in his word. His word, I cannot overemphasize, produces the fruit of righteousness. None of our efforts to do it can accomplish it. His word in that seed of the word is the life of God. And when it's in the right soil and watered continually, it will produce the effects of the divine life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So that excites me just to know, glory to God, that I don't have to work so hard and to try to make a change in my life. But if I get the word, which is Jesus, in my heart, let it be watered on a regular basis, fruit will come. The same concept of a seed being put in the ground remained and it's just a matter of time. Isn't that right? Blessed is the man that walked not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of the scornful but listen to this, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law. Doth he meditate day and night. He shall be. Like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. That bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaves shall not wither. That's a promise. And whatsoever he do. Shall prosper. Would you lift your hands and give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. I don't know about you, but that gets the devil off my back. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Tell the devil it's not in me. It's in the seed of the divine life. Hallelujah. Lesson number two, we talked about the integrity of God. 
If I'm going to spend time in God's word, I must understand that God is his word and his word, hallelujah, shall never fail. And the God of his word will never fail. We read, I think, a passage in Deuteronomy or Joshua. Not one good word of God failed of all that he promised Israel. He said he sent his word and he healed them. And he said that word shall not return to your void, but it shall accomplish. Somebody say accomplish. That which he pleased. And prosper, my God. Mm, mm, mm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> and the thing that he sent it out to do. Glory to God. That word, hallelujah. Time and circumstances cannot stop the power and the effects of God's holy word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, Woo. Mm. I felt that one. Mm. Glory to God. We talked about dealing with uncertainties, learning to trust God when things don't look right. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. It doesn't mean that God's not on the throne. Well, he's still there <laughs> working in us, working for us. When we cannot see, the trust is we walk by faith and not by sight. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Look at somebody say, he's working when you can't see it. Glory to God. But in order to have a steadfast faith in God, we must get rid of the uncertainties, the doubts. The fears that hinders that steadfast faith concerning the will of God for us to be healed. Hallelujah. Then on lesson number three, we talked a bit about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the rule of God. Boy, that this, I, I feel that when I say it, my God. The kingdom of God is the rule of God, the divine rule and reign of God. You know, you, uh, when, it's so beautiful when Jesus came on the scene. I don't care what was going on, how bad it was. So Jesus comes, first he gets, goes into the town of Galilee. And he preaches in that synagogue. And the Bible declares that he healed every kind of sickness. And every kind of disease. In our day and time, if it was cancer, lupus, leukemia, heart disease, Crohn's disease, I don't care what it is. He, if they were sitting among him when he uh, preaches, then he'd heal every kind. Every kind. That's what he did. But it was to demonstrate the Father's will. There can be no doubt in our mind when we look at the Holy Scriptures that it is God's will for us to heal, to be healed. It is God's will. It is God's will when uh, the doctors say there's no cure for it. You lift your hands and say, hallelujah. Jesus is that cure. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible teaches now. All right, follow with me now. So uh, we talked about the kingdom of God, the kingdom ruling and reigning. And, and, when, and the, Jesus came to demonstrate the rule and reign of that kingdom. And especially in the human life, when man fell, Satan gained control and possession of many lives. And so it is today where the evil one, people are under the sway of the prince of the power of the air according to Ephesians 2. And we were too before we were saved. But after we got saved, God broke its power from over us. What a wonderful thing. Do you know what, when God does things for us, it, it, it calls for thanksgiving and praise. Hallelujah. He broke the grip of sin from off of our lives. And, and then he began to heal and deliver because that dynamic, power of his kingdom 
begin to rule. And that's what he's doing today for everyone that will believe and receive. The dynamo of this kingdom of God comes to heal any kind of sickness, any kind of disease among the people. It is God's deed. The kingdom is God's deed. Isn't that right? It is God's work. Hallelujah. And so the, today, I'm going to begin talking about the atonement, healing the sick. It is God's will for the sick to be healed. He forgiveth all my iniquities and heal all of my diseases, right? Yes. Hallelujah. And so now, in the book of Romans, we looked at something here that I want to call your attention back again. Look at verse 12 in chapter 5. And I want to talk, uh, kind of use this as a main verse. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world. Somebody say one man. One man. Let me say this again. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world. Do y'all see that? Yeah. Sin didn't enter the world by a whole lot of people. Really, really important now in order to see the other part of this. And death by sin. How did death come? What doorway? Death came, right? We had to die because of sin. We had to die because of the sin of not a whole lot of men. One man. Got to get this now. Are you with me? In Adam, all die. If I had come into the world through the womb of my mother and says, well, I don't care about y'all. That ain't going to happen to me. I'm not letting this curse up on me. Forget it. No way on this earth. It wouldn't have done any good. Isn't that right? David said, I was born in sin. He didn't have a choice about this matter. Because of one man. But it doesn't stop there. Look what he said. And so death passed upon all men for that all had sinned. Verse 15 says, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, right? Yeah. Much more the grace of God and the gift, somebody say gift, yeah. by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded to many. Not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to, say it with me, condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto what? Justification. Say it again, justification. Therefore being justified. What do I mean? Declared righteous. Look at your neighbor and say, you are righteous. Now, if you are righteous, then you don't act like a sinner, right? You're righteous. But you must understand that you're righteous through the precious blood of the Lamb. Isn't that right? Amen. Not through your goodness, but through the blood of the Lamb. Okay. So, but it, it, what I wanted to emphasize, it was through Adam that sin came in the world and death. What do you want, the point you want to make, what, the point I want to make about this is this. If death, sin came and sickness through one man's sin, its true remedy is in Jesus Christ. Are you all hearing me? It's in one man that was the sacrifice for sin. Now, if I stop right there, that qualifies everyone that believes in God to be healed. Come on, give your hand. Give God a clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus qualifies us to be healed of every sickness, of every disease. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank God I don't have to try to, oh, Lord, if I pray a little more, if I, if I fast a little more, if I can just do right, maybe he'll heal me. 
All those things are nice. But healing comes through faith in what he's done. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Now, what does that mean? That means that if a man walks right in here now, he had alcohol and he got alcohol on his breath. He come in here, he said, he listened to this word. And he believed this word that's being preached. He's got a condition in his body. And he can be sitting right there in his seat listening. And all of a sudden, he believes this thing. He said, you know what? God, I believe that. And I thank you. And if he opened his heart to be healed, he can be healed. Hadn't done no righteousness. Hadn't done no good works. This gospel is by faith in the blood of the Lamb. Faith in what he has done already. I get excited about that. God. Wow. Now, let me, let me deal with this in here before I go further. All right. He said, verse 16, and not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. The gift is this way. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. This is what happened. All have sinned, so we were under condemnation, right? Fear, guilt, you name it. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. There is no condemnation to them that are in Christ. So now that if you're feeling condemned, if you're feeling guilty because you feel like you haven't measured up to God, guess what? You are justified. And if you shake it off and says, wait a minute, I'm acting like an Old Testament believer. I'm letting it be by my works. The only problem with that is this. When your works are doing good, you feel feeling real spiritual and got everything intact, you know, you're excited. But the moment it's not intact. You're feeling condemned or guilty again, right? So there's a kind of a yo-yo kind of a up and down experience that we can experience as Christian because maybe not understanding what God has done. If your doctrine has not truly changed when you fall short, then your faith has not changed. And if your faith has not changed, things remain the same. You can rejoice even when you're going through trials. Everybody see that? Because your, your faith in God has not changed just because you ran into a bump in the road. You still believe in the atonement. You still believe that it was this blood that atoned for your sin. You still believe that it was because of faith in his blood that you are now justified and saved. As long as those are intact, you have no reason where you can't truly rejoice in the midst of your suffering. Somebody join me. Let's give God some praise. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I had a situation that happened to me many years ago, struggling with this very thing. And the Lord said, you know why you don't like to get angry? I said, no. He said, because you feel condemned when you get angry. And I thought about it. I thought about it. I said, wow. That is powerful. Yeah. And right away, the guilt feelings, I was able to just shake them right on off. Because it was all in the thinking. It was all in my thinking. Trying to measure up. As long as you measure up, you can laugh. You can rejoice, right? But that's the salvation by works. Look at somebody say, it does not work. Hallelujah. It's by faith in his blood that you can keep a steady faith in God. Because, you know, Jesus is the same yesterday and today and forever. All right, so 
One man, sin came. One man, the answer and the atonement for sin. He atoned. He sacrificed. He, his life was an offering for sin. Now, the word atonement is actually Christ's death. Interpreted as an offering of a redemptive sacrifice. This event, the atonement, this saving deed, dying, in the whole range of its results is commonly called the atonement. Christ dying, offering his life as a sacrifice for the sins of the world. Adam sinned and he brought us into this condition. Christ came to get us out of this condition. All right, so with that in mind, we go on. Three things briefly I want to kind of uh, reiterate here concerning this, that we, our faith may be intact to believe God for healing. Now, before these things are over during the process here, all you have to do, all we have to do is listen closely, intently to the word. And as the Holy Spirit wills and moves upon us, as he finds a heart that's in that's faith in believing, it can happen so fast. It happens. God is in the midst right now. And uh, so I just want you to uh, expect something to happen. Expect God to because his word is so, so, so wonderful. And um, so now let's look at uh, three things here I want to point out. Um, righteousness is by faith of Jesus Christ. His true remedy is in the atonement. Somebody say atonement. Yes, one body, one body took the word apart and says at one net, but it's actually making atonement for our sins, sacrificing for the sins of humanity. Um, first thing, look at Leviticus 25. Do I want to go there first? We find quite a few Old Testament types in the uh, Old Testament that points to, uh, that shows atonement and healing taking place because or during the atonement, all right? The animals, the sacrifices, the lambs, and so on were offered in the Old Testament, but it was, believe it or not, always in connection with God healing and, and, and uh, healing people, you know. And so we're going to look at maybe a couple of three right here. Uh, let's see here. Let's look at Exodus chapter 12. Okay, let's go to Exodus first. I'm sorry. Exodus 12. And verse 1 says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be to you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. And so then he gave instructions for Moses to give to the children of Israel about eating the Paschal lamb, the sacrificial lamb, and he says, your lamb, verse 5, shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. They shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire, and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with the legs, and with the pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain till the morning, and that which remain of it till the morning ye shall burn with fire. 
Verse 11 said, and thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It's the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite or kill all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you. Now, this is uh, Israel was in the land of Goshen. And God was about to send a deaf angel throughout all the land of Egypt. And this was the last plague upon Pharaoh and, his, and upon his kingdom. And he was going to take the firstborn and kill. Every firstborn in every household was going to die in Pharaoh's kingdom and also the beast. So, but for Israel in the land of Goshen, God told them in order for that deaf angel not to destroy you when he comes, I want you to put kill the, the blood of the lamb and place that blood on the side post and on the uh, threshold. And so when that deaf angel comes to destroy every firstborn in every household, then when he see the blood of the children of Israel, he passed right over it. They would not die. No firstborn would die because of the blood. Everybody see it, right? All right, now the blood was significant for them to, re, to, to, to be alive, to remain alive and protected. Verse um, 12 again, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, and when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague of death shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be to you a memorial. You shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generation. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance. And so he goes in to tell them, but I want you to see the blood, the power of the blood that was offered for sin. Now, if that blood, since that blood was so powerful because it was a part of the command of God, how much more? Shall the blood of Christ offered for our sins cleanse us, not only keep us from death, but cleanse us from every kind of condition there is. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. And that Passover it was a type of salvation for us through the blood of Jesus Christ. Its true remedy is found in the atonement. Now he atoned here. This is an, an atonement uh, concerning. And, 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 but, but here's the beauty. Christ, the Bible teaches, that is our Passover. He's our Passover. In other words, God, <laughs> glory to God, will not destroy us because of Jesus Christ, because of the blood that he shed. Not because of any other thing that we have going for us, but because of the blood. Because of the blood of Jesus. Because of the blood, saints. This is significant for our victory, right? Okay, all right, we move on. That's one. And then. In the book of uh, 1 Corinthians 11, Jesus says it like this. For I've received of the Lord that which also I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is, what? Broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. See, Christ is our Passover. He's our Passover. Then after the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup 
is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now, see, the devil don't like for you to be talking a lot about the blood. Be careful, he'll put you to sleep, all right? <laughs> Come on, let's give God some praise here before you get to sleep. <laughs> I, I know his tricks. I know his tricks too good. He'll, next thing you know, you're nodding, but you're nodding because you're talking about the blood. If, if I start talking about God's going to bless you with $1,000, ain't nobody going to be sleeping in this place. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Come on here. Isn't that right? <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know the tricks of the enemy. I just want you to be alert. Isn't that right? Get away from me. Amen. So Christ is our Passover. He said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. And then that, that thing hit me like a book. Oh, wow. He's our Passover. You know how you can know this in your head, but then not know it really in your spirit? It was like, whoa, Christ is our Passover. My God. So I pray revelation knowledge for us today because that's what makes the difference there when we, hallelujah, perceive it in our spirit. God does something. He opened the word to us, and it makes the difference. So Christ is our Passover. And remember, remember what he said that, uh, and I'm not going to go into detail. I've been studying that particular passage a bit here in Corinthians. Uh, but uh, he, you remember he said, if, uh, if, if we eat and drink of it unworthily, shall be guilty of the blood and body of our Lord. And he, he ended up saying, verse 30, for this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many die. Not properly discerning what the sacraments really meant. And they had their feasts and they were carrying on and they come out of a pagan lifestyle. And, uh, but the bottom line, and to cut a whole lot of words concerned it, what it really amounted to was they did not, they somehow or another connected the Lord's Supper with the pagan love feast. They celebrated heroes and people in the past. They had love feasts. And they, in, in the world, while they were, before they were saved, they drank, they carried on. They, there was uh, just excess. And so some of them hadn't been really, really converted as they should because Paul said there's drunkenness. And they're right, and, and, and that's not symbolic. That's real what it was, drunkenness. You know? So they, 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 didn't understand, they didn't understand when they were taking the, the Lord's Supper now, they would eat the Paschal meal. Then after the meal, they would always partake of the Lord's Supper. But they were improperly representing or taking this Lord's Supper. It, it wasn't that, and they needed change too, but it wasn't that they were unworthy in the sense because they weren't living up to par as far as a Christian. It was more or less, according to what the study said, because they irreverently were partaking of the Lord's Supper. They connected it and they just said, it, well, it was just like the pagan feast. And so Paul sought to explain to them what that really was. He said, I'm telling you what God revealed to me. And he said, the night in which he was betrayed. So he takes them back to a moment where anybody should begin to have a reverence in their lives to say, wow, in the night when he was betrayed? So the Lord's Supper must be done very reverently understanding what it really meant. You know, that, that's all I'm going to say about that. But he said, for this cause many are weak and sickly among us, and many even die prematurely. We're still talking about healing the sick, y'all. So whatever we do as far as ending, I, we, we, he was talking, you remember he started in 1 Corinthians and talk, talking about, I, I heard there are divisions among you. And he said, I partly believe it. But, you know, 
time in God can, can change all things. Isn't that right? Time in God. So, to reference the Lord's Supper when we take it is very important to understand what it meant. All right, so, and then, then, then uh, uh, I thought that he, he brought that out here, but he was basically showing earlier that Christ is our Passover. He said, this is my body, which is broken for you. So he's our Passover. All right. Now we go to, again, um, Leviticus. Now I'm going to take you to Leviticus. 25, Leviticus 25. Leviticus 25, okay. Now this pertains to the year of Jubilee. Okay, starting at verse 8. Everybody there? And thou are you. Thou is you, same thing. You shall number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, to you. Seven times, seven years. And the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto you forty and nine years. Then shall you cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month in the day of atonement shall you make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. Everybody see that? Let me read it again. Then shall you cause the trumpet, deals with announcing the good news or the year of Jubilee. Then shall you cause the trumpet of Jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month in the day of atonement. Shall you make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. You shall hallow the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all the inhabitants thereof. All right. So the trumpet was the sound on the day of the atonement. This annual atonement when the high priest would go and make that atonement for sin. On that day after 50 years, seven sevens is 49. And then on the 50th year shall be a year of freedom of year of release on that day that 50th year God said that on the day of atonement uh, and at, at the sound of the trumpet announcing the year of release announcing the year of freedom and what God did was in Luke 4 applied the gospel Era to the year of Jubilee. All right? So, although that was one year, the era that we're living in is applied or is like a year of freedom from the time that he began and died on the cross or the church was birthed until the time that, that God takes us out of this world. It's a time of jubilee. And that's one of the reasons why God so much wants us to understand that it's a time of jubilee. There must be shouting and rejoicing before the Lord because it's a time of freedom. And it's a time of release. Now, and during the time of the jubilee, uh, the Bible says in verse 10, and ye shall hallow the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee to you and ye shall return every man to his possession. And ye shall return every man to his family. So powerful. So powerful. Two outstanding, now in, in the gospel era, two outstanding possessions to be restored during the gospel era are restoration of health, for the soul and body. All right, this is this is this is this is God's promise. Well, you say, well, I mean, I don't know. I, I think the Lord told me my sickness is because I was disobedient. That might be, might be, 
but what you do is repent and let the life come. Isn't that right? All right. We said two outstanding possessions to be restored during the gospel era are help for the soul and body. Matthew 4. He says, verse 23, Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. See? Restoration of soul and body, right? And then verse 24 says, and his fame went throughout all Syria. They brought to him all sick people that were taken with various diseases and torments and those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic, those that had the palsy, and he healed them. Now what happens was this. this that's healing for the body and soul. Healing for the soul, uh, you, you know, the inner part of our spirits and soul where we, uh, where, you know, people get delivered. And then there's healing for the sick as well. So those things are the part of the or the main restoration for a human being when he comes into the kingdom during this gospel era. And that's why you see when Jesus went through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there was just healing of the sick, healing of the sick, casting out demons everywhere he went, everywhere he proclaimed uh, uh, the uh, year of God's favor. So the second thing, last, the next thing to the next to the last, forgiveness and healing were offered universally. Wherever Christ preached the acceptable year of the Lord. Forgiveness and healing were offered universally wherever Christ preached the acceptable year of the Lord. All right? Wherever he announced the good news, universally, whoever was sick could be healed. Verse 35, and Jesus, chapter 9, verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogue and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Forgiveness and healing were offered universally wherever Christ preached the acceptable year of the Lord. All right, verse 2, I mean, uh, so now look in chapter 9, verse 2. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy lying on a bed and Jesus seeing their faith said to the sick of the palsy son be of good cheer thy sins be forgiven thee so once again forgiveness and healing were offered universally wherever Christ preached the acceptable year of the Lord and it is really good to know that there's forgiveness for all sins to understand how Jesus heals and that's the same thing today because it said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our sins are forgiven. And wherever this gospel is preached, wherever Jesus went about preaching and people, he forgave people. Wherever he preached the gospel, he forgave people and he healed people. And that's what he wants today. People forgiven and people healed. So you can be healed if you believe today. And then the last part before I conclude is the inner and outer man was then made whole and ready for the service of God. The inner and the outer man was made whole and ready for the service of God. I'm going to read this. I think it's the last scripture here in Mark. Yeah, Mark chapter 5. <clears throat> So verse 15 says, And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed in his, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Uh, and how be it Jesus suffered him not, but said to him, go home to your friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee and have had compassion on thee. Wow. In the book of Leviticus, no mercy was offered until the blood of the atonement sprinkled the mercy seat. No blessing was announced until the day of atonement. No trumpet was to sound throughout all the land announcing the year of release until the day of atonement. 
The atonement was a release, God releasing people from their sins. And that's the beautiful thing, just a portion of the scripture. We'll be talking more about the atonement because it is in the atonement that we have life. It is through Jesus Christ that we have health, that we have peace. It is in the atonement that every expectation of our lives to bring to be healed and to be whole and to be made well comes from God. Jesus paid that price that we might be free. God wants us healed. God wants us healed today. He wants us healed today. No matter what state we find ourselves in, God wants us healed. I believe that like I'm standing here. If you have a condition in your body, I want you to begin to believe God. You hear the words of the atonement through one man, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He atoned for our sins. He offered up his life, his blood, that you and I might be whole, made well, body, soul, and spirit. And as we believe this, and as we in faith open our hearts to God, God's Holy Spirit will do what we cannot even imagine done. He is willing. He is ready. He wants to do it. And he wants to do it now. Hallelujah. I want you to begin to let's thank the Lord together. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your kindness, Lord. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. You're great. Healed by your power. Healed by your power. Set people free because this is your will. This is your purpose, Lord God, that your people might be free. Only the spirits of darkness would love to keep your people in bondage through sickness and disease and suffering, oh God, and being tortured and tormented by evil, but you came that we might have life and that we might have it to the full. Oh God, I thank you. Release your divine help today in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Let the oppressed go free. In the name of Jesus, uh, break and destroy every dominion of the evil one. Now, let him be put to flight because of your great power through the gospel of Jesus Christ. For you've come that the sheep might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Oh, God, set free by your power now. Lift up the light of your holy countenance and let it shine on the body of Christ now. Heal every kind of sickness. Heal diseases, oh God. Work your miracle power because you're alive. Let your divine life be felt in this place today. And we're going to give you the glory as your people begin to praise. Let's begin to praise the Lord. The praise the Lord. The praise the Lord. And the praise the Lord. For he is good. Hallelujah. Just stand with us and let's begin to just praise the Lord. So that he can begin to usher his power and presence in this atmosphere to loose the captives today. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Just praise him. Just thank him and praise him. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the atonement. It is in the atonement. Ah, uh, God, it is in the atonement that every miracle, hallelujah, and diseases will be healed. It is in the atonement, the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ. It is in the shedding of that blood that demons tremble. It is in the shedding of that blood, hallelujah, God, that captives will be free. And I thank you for that blood. I thank you for the atonement of Christ. I thank you, Lord, for he sacrificed his life. I thank you for what he's done on Calvary's cross. I thank you, Lord God, because of Jesus Christ, uh, we shall be made free. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, with our hands lifted up unto God. Let's magnify him for the 
work on the cross. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless the Lord, our soul. Bless the Lord, our rock and our fortress. Um, I thank you, Lord. I want my wife to come and I want you to join hands with me as we begin to pray and break the power of hindering spirits. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. If you'll join hands with someone next to you. Father, we thank you for your great power. We thank you for the message of the atonement. We thank you, Lord God, that evil tried to stop it, Lord God, because uh, he hates the atonement. He knows, Lord God, that this is, this is the heart of the gospel. He understands, Lord, what set people free. He understands, Lord God, hallelujah, that Jesus died that we might live. And now, Lord God, uh, we just take authority over the powers of every demonic power that will just stand itself up against thy holy commandment uh, we forbid it and we cancel its assignment we bind it back and we break his wicked hand in the name of Jesus of Nazareth uh, we break your wicked hands and command you by the authority of Jesus name take your filthy hands off now these are God's people love and we will receive from God this day we will receive uh, because it is the will of of the Father. It is the will of the Father that his people be free. And God, we thank you for your our righteousness. And we magnify you, Lord. And we bless you now for the atonement. Oh, bless God. Hallelujah. Thank you for the atonement. Thank you for the atonement. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood that atone for our every sin. Grace through one man grace through one man shall reign shall reign in righteousness we magnify you Lord send now the help that comes from your throne in the name of Jesus none is so wonderful none is so marvelous that is so glorious in kindness as the great God of creation. Father, as we pray for our TV audience, we ask now that the power of our Lord Jesus would minister to the broken hearts, minister to the lives that are suffering sicknesses and diseases. Send the help, Lord, for you love your people everywhere hallelujah glory to the name of the lord oh lord those that are listening those whose hope is in god touch them today as they listen to the word let faith spring up in their heart that they might be whole oh yes father we thank you and we magnify you but you are perfect in goodness. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord now. We lift up each one that has been watching and those that have been listening now. Father, I ask that the Holy Spirit will take control now and touch as only you can touch. Ah, glory be to God. Thank you, Master. Heal sick bodies. Mm. Heal sick bodies. Oh, God, heal sick bodies. Heal sick bodies today. of that mother Lord that's been crying out for a healing for her body and this sickness has crippled her Lord God she want to know if you hear her cry touch her today as she hears this word let her know that it is for her you sent this word 
Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Oh, yes, Lord. Make a home. Make a home. In the strong name of our Lord. We're going to give you the praise. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. I heard the Lord speak and say he's healing heart conditions. Somebody that has a discomfort on your left side of your chest. God is healing that. If you will place your hand there and praise God and thank him for the healing. Also, God is healing somebody of pain on their right side. Hallelujah. I don't know if it's uh, the appendix or your kidneys, or God is healing, your, healing that area. If you will put your hands there and thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's thank him together. Hallelujah, Jesus. <laughs> Oh God. Oh yes, Lord. There's somebody, the Holy Spirit revealed to me somebody's having a, a, a like a migraine headache. You're listening to this broadcast and the Lord is healing you. You feel that touch and that witness from God. Lift your hands and receive. God's healing you of a migraine headache today. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I hear the Lord saying that he's healing people of depression. And some have been silent, uh, suffering silently with depression. God has said he's going to visit you today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we destroy that dominion of that spirit that will depress you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. There's somebody here, you've been contemplating suicide. I want to speak to you directly. Your life is important to God and others. Do not listen to those voices to tell you you're not worth anything and you need to just end it all. God said to you today, you must not. God has use for you. Repent right now and lift your hand to God and God is going to heal you of that spirit. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. God is healing people from anxiety attacks. Hallelujah. Panic attacks. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke anxiety attacks. We rebuke panic attacks. We rebuke the spirit of fear. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And now we're going to pray for the body here. Father, we thank you for the body here. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your Holy Spirit. Confirm your word. In the name of Jesus Christ. Heal diseases. Mm. If somebody here has a blood disease. A blood disease. I don't know if you're aware of it. Maybe you've been to the doctor or not. But God's healing this blood disease. Father, I thank you now. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, God. You got something? Thank you for this body. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your kindness towards your people. Your word shall not return to your void, but it shall accomplish that which you please. So we're going to give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord.